What is up everyone? Hope you're all doing well. So we are in the MD Fish Tank studio. It is looking great down here. We've got so much going on and so many exciting things coming up. But I wanted to do a fish files on the clouded archer fish because these guys have properly become one of my favorite fish in the studio. Probably because of their feeding habits, but they're just cool to watch as well. So uh, yeah, let's get into it. Let's do a fish files on the clouded archer fish. Now, one thing I want to say before getting into this video is that there are several different species of archer fish in the world. I think there's like eight or nine different um, species that are sort of registered, known, I suppose. Um, and some of the importers think that could be far, far more. There could be many more species of archer fish only because the patterns do tend to vary. So we've seen it a few times when getting in clouded archer fish, the patterns can be anything from almost like, um, what's that, horizontal, that's the word I was looking for, horizontal stripes to almost these sort of black blotches that you see on these ones that we've got here. <sighs> Until a lot more work's done and a lot more studies are done and a lot more sort of, yeah, work is done on the archer fish group. We're probably not gonna know, but in years to come, there could be several different species that end up being split up. So these guys here are blithe eye, blithe eye, however you want to say it. Um, and they might get split up into two or three different species. It happens a lot in the fish keeping world. Now, I do believe these guys are the true clouded archer fish. This is the pattern that I most sort of commonly see. Um, but like I said before, there have been some with zebra stripes and some with a few different markings. So think there is going to be a few other species that do come out of the woodwork over the next few years. Now in this video we're going to be talking about these ones which I believe are the true clouded archer fish. Um, there are like I say a lot of other species out there and we're not going to sort of venture into the realms of them because some of them are brackish water so part salt water, some of them grow up to like a foot long. Um, so there's loads of different species so we're only going to be talking about these and what is commonly traded as the clouded archer fish. In my experiences, these tend to be the easier ones to keep. There are a few other species out there that um, people say are easy to keep, but they're not as common in the hobby. These guys have sort of gained quite a popularity in recent years. They tend to end up being quite sort of easy to uh, acclimatize to aquarium conditions, and they tend to eat and, yeah, they just generally do well. The clouded archerfish comes from Myanmar and inhabits sort of quite a wide range of rivers over there. Most of these rivers are really quite difficult to get to and they're quite sort of hidden away as it were. And because of this, we only knew about this species in drawings until 2000s. I think it was discovered back in like the late 1800s. And it's only recently that it's sort of actually a living species was presented because up until that point, it was just a few drawings that had been drawn way back in the 1800s the reason we knew about this species. In the wild, they're gonna be inhabiting streams and little rivers with lots of overhanging vegetation, lots of overhanging roots, where they're obviously gonna be picking out their prey. These guys primarily live on small fish, small crustaceans, and obviously insects that they're gonna shoot out of the trees and plants. So that overhanging vegetation and roots is where they're gonna get their dinner from. So they're gonna be hanging out right in the riverbanks all underneath that waiting for their next meal. Temperature wise, they're sticking in at that normal tropical temperature, 24 degrees up to about 28 degrees Celsius, which I'm getting better at Fahrenheit. That'd be 79 to 82, no, 77 to 82, maybe. Anyway, close enough, 77 to 82 Fahrenheit, I think. So they're sitting right in that tropical band that we keep most of our tropical fish in. Don't let that fool you though, they're not the perfect inhabitants for a tropical aquarium and we'll get into that in a bit. Water parameters, really you're just aiming for clean, clear, well oxygenated water. Give them that and they're absolutely fine. When it comes to pHs, most people are looking to aim for about a neutral pH. Obviously you read a lot of archer fish are brackish species or are hard water species. These ones don't tend to be that bad. They seem to be quite tolerant of very, well not very soft water, but down to about 6.5 all the way up to about 7.58. They seem to get on fine. If you aim for a pH of about seven, really crystal clear, clean water, well filtered, you won't have any problems with them. They'll be very easy. When it comes to sizing, you've got to be careful which ones you are picking up. Like I say, to the, to the untrained eye, they can all look very, very similar. These ones, the clouded archer fish, they shouldn't be getting any more than about 15 centimeters, which is six inches roughly. Um, they shouldn't be getting any bigger than that. Obviously, like I said, there are several species that they think might be sort of imported under the same name. 
So you might get one that grows a little bit smaller, but if you aim for around the 15 centimeter mark, you shouldn't go too far wrong. That's where you should be getting them to. As for keeping them in groups, whilst they're juvenile, absolutely fine. They tend to get on really, really well and they'll stick in a group. As they get a little bit older, they can get a little bit territorial, very much like a cichlid to be fair. As they grow up, they get a bit more territorial, they want their own space. So you just gotta be careful of how many you're keeping together really. I would say start off with a group, maybe four, five or six, something like that. And you can always thin out the ones that maybe aren't doing so well or the ones that take off and are being a little bit too aggressive. You'll just have to sort of adapt to the situation. I've had it several times now with customers where they've actually got a group and the group has stayed together forever. They've been absolutely fine, but it's just something bearing in mind when you're keeping them, you may need to mess around with the group at a later date, depending on how they grow up and how they want to be. Setup wise for archer fish, there's a few things to think about. So one, you're thinking about cover. They can be quite a skittish fish, can be quite scaredy. Um, so things and places that they can dart back to and get away from are ideal. So big bits of plant like we've got in here, maybe even floating plants with big trailing roots in them. That's gonna give them enough cover that they can dart back to and hide. And hopefully they'll feel a little bit more secure in coming out to see you. You do still want to give them a good amount of open water space to swim in. They are a chunky fish. They do want a bit of room to sort of stretch their muscles. So keeping the planting sort of placed towards the back and having some open areas towards the front, it's gonna give you ample time to watch them, to sort of check that they're all feeding and make sure that you've got space to feed them. Another thing to bear in mind is the aquarium. So keeping them in an open top aquarium can be a little bit risky because they can jump. Obviously these fish will jump for insects and flies and things like that in the wild. So yeah, you do have to be careful of them getting out of the aquarium that way. Obviously, as you can see in this one, we run the water level quite a way down and they don't tend to get anywhere near that. But once they grow up and they get to sort of almost adulthood, they're going to be a lot more powerful and it's going to be a lot easier to, for them to get that height out of the aquarium. If you're worried about it, obviously you can run them in a lidded aquarium. So just have it so that there is a proper made lid on the top of it. The other thing you could look at getting something like a jump guard, which is like a plastic mesh in a frame that just sits over the top of the aquarium. This is going to stop anything getting out of the aquarium and you losing an archer fish. When it comes to tank mates for archer fish, you're gonna be looking at things that aren't gonna fit in their mouths. They have got a trapdoor mouth to them, so it's very easy for them to swallow anything that's sort of narrow. The other thing to think about is nothing that's too boisterous or too nippy. Um, they aren't the most sort of aggressive fish, I suppose you would say, so they can get bullied by other fish quite quickly. With that in mind, if you're thinking of um, shoaling fish to go in with them, I'd probably be looking at things like rainbow fish. Any of your sort of 10 centimeter and above rainbow fish would be perfect for them and would get on really well, nice and peaceful, chilled out, shouldn't be too bad at all. The other thing you could look at is while they're juveniles is some of your tetras. So some of your things like your broader body tetras, lemon tetras, x-ray tetras, they're gonna be deep enough that they shouldn't be eaten. Once the archer fish are larger, they may end up as lunch so you might want to move them out at a later date but certainly while they're this size they're not going to bother anything like that if you have the space for something sort of equally as territorial as the archer fish you could always look at something like geophagus or the earth-eating cichlids they'd be a perfect thing for archer fish tanks because what you'd find is the geophagus would stay in the bottom reaches of the aquarium and the archer fish are going to stay in the top and neither are really going to bother each other that being said, you could look at a lot of other ones, keyhole cichlids, um, some of the acara groups, some of the more peaceful acaras. Again, they're all gonna get on absolutely fine and inhabit different areas of the aquarium. Actually, another one that I've just thought of that would be good, it would lurk a little bit more in the top, so in the same areas of the archer fish, but if you've got a bigger tank, it'd be fine. The festive cichlids that I've got at home, those guys are really chilled out and really peaceful would look actually very similar to the archer fish as well. So yeah, they would be a good option as long as you've got the tank space for them. The other thing you're probably gonna want to look at is clean up crew to give you a bit of a helping hand. These guys are meaty eaters. They do like, you know, blood worms and meal worms and all sorts of different meaty foods. So there is always a bit of leftover food floating about. So if you're looking at algae grazing, the most common, a bristle nose. A bristle nose catfish would be perfect in here. They're not going to bother him. He's not going to bother them. Absolutely ideal. If you're looking for something to pick up the uneaten food, then I'd look at some of your bigger Corydora species, maybe even hot plow catfish if you wanted to go that big. Or like we've got in here, we've got some of the loaches, which 
have all disappeared now that I've sort of gone to look at them. But yeah, we've got some of the medium loaches in here. And again, they're just going to be picking up that food at the bottom, any uneaten food from the archerfish. Remember though, if the archerfish are snaffling everything, make sure your catfish are getting fed as well with algae wafers and catfish pellets because yeah, there's nothing worse than watching a fish get skinny just because you think it's feeding on leftovers. We get onto the coolest bit about archerfish, which is the feeding. So archerfish are a very impressive animal. They've got like a, a, a modified tongue and mouth, I suppose you would say, where they can channel a jet of water and hit insects and food sources off of leaves and branches and things like that. Just so cool to watch. Really, really awesome. I'll try and get some good footage of that because that's probably my favourite bit and it's probably why I like them, enjoy them so much. For actually getting them to feed in the aquarium, they're quite simple in a way, um, but at first you may need to entice them. So these ones were a little bit shy when they first went in. So we were sticking bloodworm. We were like defrosting bloodworm and we were just pushing it to the inside of the glass and sticking it to the inside of the glass. Look, this one's already come up, look, to see what I'm doing. Um, anyway, um, so yeah, we were sticking bloodworm for quite a few weeks just to bring them out and we would have to stick it on, step back away from the aquarium and then they'd all come out and they'd be jumping for it and they'd be spitting at it. Once they got used to that, then we were able to start introducing like pellet foods and flake foods, doing the same thing, sticking them to the glass, putting bits of it on wood, almost like getting it damp and then making it into a paste. Then they were again spitting at that. Now we've got them to the point where we can literally stand back, we can throw pellets in, we can throw bloodworm in, we can throw mealworms in, and they'll instantly come out and strike for it. It's taken a few weeks, but it's well worth putting that time in because then, you know, you know that you've got your fish feeding easily. There's nothing worse than having to constantly mess around with live foods or, you know, messing around with frozen foods because it does just end up as a bit of a chore and you end up, you don't always give them the best. So taking the time to train them onto some foods like that is definitely the best way of doing it. The main thing is though, we still use all the foods. We still use the frozen blood worms and frozen mysis shrimps. We still use mealworms. We still use flake foods. We still use pellet food. We use a good mixture of everything because that way you know they're getting something in their diet that is good for them. There's nothing worse than a fish getting stuck on one type of food because then it's, well, it's just not really nutritional for them, I suppose, in the long run. You know, the variety of food is always a better thing to do. If one day you can't get hold of the food they're used to and they don't eat it, you've got a bit of a problem, haven't you? So, yeah, keep those four or five different foods on rotation, keep them feeding, and, yeah, you'll find it so much easier. So we get on to sexing and breeding of archerfish. Now, sexing, unfortunately, is a no-go. There's not really any known ways of telling them apart. Um, externally anyway um, so yeah there is no real way there isn't much on breeding to be honest with you most of it is actually a mystery we're still unsure of how and when and why and yeah what archer fish do some of the brackish ones are thought to go out to um, sort of coral reefs maybe spawn out there that's one of the things I have read um, obviously there's always more info there's always scientists doing studies on these guys so there's always new info coming out all of the time so it might be the case that we know what's going on with them in the next year, six months, two months, who knows. But yeah, at the moment, there's really no knowledge of how, when, why, what, whatever, when it comes to sexual changes or breeding, there's nothing. It's something I'm actually working on at the moment, which is the differences between tank bred, tank raised, um, wild caught. Now, ultimately, in, in, a, in most people's minds, you automatically think of wild caught being a bad thing. Um, and not to get into it into this video, but wild caught, not necessarily a bad thing. You know, we have, I think this image in our heads of our neon tetras swimming down this nice serene river, you know, aquatic plants everywhere, the sun's shining, the birds are singing. It's all lovely. And the neons are just buzzing down through in their little shoal of 500. Most of the time, the fish we keep in this hobby are bottom of the food chain. They're, well, at least very low in it. Certainly things like your smaller tetras and stuff. Most things are going to be out to eat them. Um, and so it's not this perfect life out in the wild. So when we take them out of the wild, as long as it is done sustainably and ethically and all of that sort of stuff, it's actually quite a, a good thing. You know, these places flood in the rainy season, then as the waters recede, fish get stuck in pools that ultimately dry up like that happens you know we've all seen it in rock pools or maybe most of us have seen it in rock pools where the sea comes in and it leaves fish stranded and those fish can ultimately succumb to birds and predation so 
it's not as clear cut, I think, as people think it is wild caught, tank bred, tank raised. I think it's quite a quite an interesting subject. So I'm actually working on it with a few different um, behind the scenes people. Um, and I think I've got, yeah, cool insight into it. So should be a cool video. Um, but yeah, anyway, watch out for that. I'll stop talking about that now. Actually, I didn't want to stop talking about it. One little quick thing. Um, think of the places that these fish come from. They're coming from South America. They're coming from um, India. They're coming from Asia. They're, they're coming from all over the world. Now, weirdly, that puts a value on the river. It sounds mental, but if they can use it as a food fish, it's going to be pennies for them. Food fish is not worth a lot of money. But if that river suddenly has archer fish in it that you can sustainably catch and you know tank raising is catching them at a young age growing them up and then selling them on when they're bigger that river or lake or whatever suddenly has a very high value to it so it's worth them keeping it clean it's not worth them damming it or not worth them using it as irrigation on their crops so it protects the river system as well um, again lots of different pros and cons but we'll get into it into another video so maybe the uh, archer fish are a cool project for someone. You know, get a group of the uh, clouded ones, grow them up, get them to full size, start researching where they're from and how they, how the weather systems work over there, how the rainy season might work over there. Start trying to work out how you might breed them. It's a long project, but it'd be certainly a cool one. But uh, yeah, anyway, that's enough on archer fish. Uh, watch out for the wild caught tank bred, tank raised video. It will be coming. And like I said, I don't think it's as clean cut as everyone thinks. I uh, I can see the benefits to all of them. It just depends where you fall. So, uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Uh, maybe in the studio. Well, who knows?